Hey there, and welcome to this video on procedures and functions. We're uploading this as a video just because we missed out on the Monday lecture due to the recent long weekend. All right, procedures and functions. Before we really get into it, let's motivate why procedures and functions are so useful. So here we have a little program uh, that is something we've seen before. So I've got this Pokemon struct, which defines a, a HP, which is an int, speed, which is an int, and this enum for the elemental type. The elemental type is just an enumeration of fire, uh, water, grass, and flying. In our main function of the program, you can see we create a, a struct Pokemon, and we've called this one Squirtle, and we assign the values 150 and the elemental type of water, which makes sense. Here, then, we have some code to print uh, that struct, and we're just printing out the HP speed and that type as an integer. Down here we create another Pokemon, Charmander, who's a fire type and it's got some de different details there. If we run this program, what we see is that Squirtle gets printed and Charmander gets printed. Now one quick problem I want to fix with this program is the type. Because the type is an enumeration, in C there's no way to understand that that type means water or fire or grass or flying. So something we, we might want to do is not print the type here in the printf call. And instead we can print, we can say if uh, the squirtle.type, you know, uh, is equal to water, right, printf, it's a water type. And we would add the other checks there for the fire and uh, grass and flying and so on. And here is really what motivates uh, our need for functions. The problem is down here, I'm also going to need to put that exact same code. What we really want is a way to repeatedly print, for ex in this case, a Pokemon struct. So I can just call, for example, print Pokemon and the code itself will know what to do. And that's exactly what procedures and functions allow us to do. So they allow us to do repeatable blocks of code which do something different every time, but it's logically the same idea. And in fact, you've been using functions already. Printf, scanf, even main are functions. So these functions are reusable blocks of code. They can have input, actions and si or side effects and output, so results. We call functions to execute their body and we provide any input necessary. And then we can access the result of that function if we need to. But not every function has a result or returns something. And we can call those functions over and over from anywhere within our program. So let's take a look at the syntax for how we create a function. In this really simple example, we have an add function that accepts two integers, x and y, and it returns an integer. That's what this int over here at the start means. So in this really simple example, the idea is that we just sum up the two values, the two integers, and return it. And here we are listing all those different components of the function. If we want to then use that function, we do what we call a function call. So we use the name of that function, followed by the pair of brackets, and we pass in any input that that function needs. So in this example, add requires an integer called x and an integer called y, two integers. So when we call it, we need to make sure we pass two integers. Now, in that example, previously we were passing in what we call literal integers, so it's the number two and the number five. We can also pass in variables. So rather than uh, pass in those literal integers here, we define an integer called year born, um, 1994, that so happens to be the year that I was born, and we can pass in the, the integer eight, which happens to be the year 29, uh, and we calculate what those values are, are storing and pass those into the add function. Now, this is a function that returns something. We have this return keyword. In this case, we calculate what's on the right-hand side of that return keyword, so x plus y, and it gets returned back to the caller. So if we have a look at this code block, 
When we call add here with the values 1994 and 29, the result of that, uh, whatever 1994 plus 29 may be, is assigned back and we can access it and store it in a new variable called current year. So that's how we uh, create and call functions. So if we take a look at this code over here again, our Pokemon code, the idea is we want a repeatable way to print a Pokemon. So if we think about what that means, um, we, th we can think about having some mechanism to print a Pokemon. Now, what data does this function require? It's going to require a Pokemon struct. So we're going to say, hey, if I accept a struct Pokemon, and I'll just call it Pokemon to print, then I'm saying that this function requires a Pokemon to be passed in. And then its job of printing that Pokemon, we already know how to do, but we, we can take it out of our main function and place it into that uh, function that we're cre creating. This is called decomposition. We're taking some repeated code that we'll need, you know, for example, this Charmander, we needed the exact same code there, and we're decomposing it into a function. Now we need to tidy this up a little bit. It's no longer called Squirtle. It's a generic Pokemon to print that we need to print every time. And here, this makes a lot more sense. So if that Pokemon to print type is water, we can print, hey, it's a water type. Else if, and I'm just going to copy this here, the type is fire, right? We can print, it's a fire type. And you, you, you can see how the rest of that would, would finish off. And now what we have is a repeatable way to print a Pokemon, accepting a Pokemon struct and printing out all of those details. Now I'm missing something. We said that functions require a return type. Okay, so what, what would this function return? Let's think about it. Well, actually this function, it doesn't quite make sense for it to return anything. It's just doing something. And so when we have that circumstance, this is a void function or otherwise called a procedure. So these are useful for doing something, but not returning something. So here's a bunch of really useful terminology all about functions. Return types or the type of data returned by the function, which could be void as in this case. The result, so the value returned from a function call if it exists. We have parameters. This is the type and sequence of data passed into the function. So for example, in print Pokemon, the parameters are the struct Pokemon, Pokemon to print. There's one parameter there. We have the argument, the actual value passed into a function's parameter when it's called. Well, we haven't actually called this function yet, so let's call it. So we have this print Pokemon function and we have a Pokemon. So all I need to do is call print Pokemon and pass in my Squirtle. Now we will jump into this Pokemon, pass in the Squirtle, which has its HP, speed, and the type, and this function knows how then to print uh, the correct thing for this uh, Squirtle Pokemon here. Now the really cool thing is that we get to reduce code, so I don't need to reproduce how to print a Charmander, I just print Pokemon, but this time I pass in Charmander. And you should be able to see how much cleaner this program is, especially as you need to add the other cases for the grass type and the flying type here. Now, we spoke about this idea that not all functions return something. So we have these void functions in C. And so I just want to quickly introduce that there's a special term for these types of functions that I like to use, and that is procedures. So procedures aren't a real thing in C. There's nothing in the language called a procedure. It's just a useful term to describe a function that doesn't return anything. Uh, so procedures do things, but don't have a result. And pretty much every single time we have a procedure, it means we have a side effect. So if we look at this print Pokemon procedure, the side effect would be that it printed the Pokemon that was passed in. So here's two examples of functions in C, shut door. Uh, is this a function or is this a side effect? And here's another example. 
check door shut or is door shut? Is this a function or is, is this a procedure? Well, is there a side effect or is the, is the function doing something and returning a value? I'll let you think about which may be which. And procedures, just like functions, follow the exact same syntax, but like we saw before, we just use that void uh, return type there. Void meaning nothing. Okay, and one really important thing about functions and procedures is the order. So, print Pokemon in this example needs to be defined above main because main uses it. So, the... Uh, C compiler when it's coming along and looking at your program and trying to understand it, you need to make sure that it is seen this function before you use it. Otherwise, it, it might get a bit confused, let's say. Now, there is a way to get around this. We don't always like uh, ordering and, and being very particular with the ordering of our functions. Have a think about if you have multiple functions, maybe print Pokemon needs to call some other function. You can get stuck in a bit of a um, you know, a, a mess trying to make sure that everything is defined before you actually need to use it. So we actually do have a solution to this and that is called function prototypes. So for example, I can take the print Pokemon uh, function and I just put it at the top of my program. I might put it, whoops, I might put it here. And what I'm saying here is that, hey, in this program, I'm going to have a function called print Pokemon. It's going to return void and it's going to accept struct Pokemon, Pokemon to print. Now, I don't have to give it, in, actually, in fact, this probably needs to go be below the uh, struct that it's using. Now, I have no implementation here. So I don't say, you know, what should this function do? I'm just saying this function will exist and it is going to match. And now it, the order in which we use these functions doesn't matter. All right, so a final note on functions and procedures. I know this was a really quick introduction, but we're going to be talking a lot about them in the lectures upcoming. So when you're writing procedures or functions, think about what information does this function need to do its job? So if we have this print Pokemon function, it needs to have the Pokemon passed in that it needs to print. If I don't give it a Pokemon, how do we know what to print? So I need to give it a Pokemon here. And actually, an extension of this is to think about um, what is the minimum that this function needs to do, right? It doesn't make sense to pass in some other information that isn't necessary, right? You only want to pass in information to a function that it requires. Here's another really important one. What should your function be named? Um, naming functions like naming variables is super important. Should I be creating a function or a procedure? Is it going to return anything? What's the goal of this function, right? The goal of print Pokemon is just to print to the terminal a Pokemon and its type data. So it doesn't really make sense to return back anything to main or whoever is calling it. And here's another really important thing uh, when we're thinking about functional decomposition. Am I writing any functions or repeated code that should be decomposed into a function? So if I had this code to print a Pokemon here, and then I had it again here, and then maybe I had a Bulbasaur, I need that code again. That's five lines, right? That can be decomposed into a function. Much cleaner, much more reusable. So functions are really important. You will use them uh, for the rest of your programming career in some form or another. And they change the way we think about code. Functions are structures of code and they make us, uh, they allow us to create reusable components of code that we can uh, pass information in and do something uh, in a much cleaner fashion than ev if everything was just in main. So have fun with functions. You're going to be using them for the rest of your life if you go on to continue programming. And we'll see you really soon in the upcoming lectures.